Let's look at some text selection techniques that will drastically reduce your editing time. We'll also demonstrate a way to reproduce single and multiple formatting steps with a single keystroke. We'll begin with selecting text. For most users, selecting text means clicking at a start point where you want the text to be highlighted and then dragging in somewhat of a diagonal direction to reach the end of the data. Although this is easy, it's not without its risks. For one thing, if I wanted to select this entire sentence, I might drag a little too far accidentally and get a bit of the next sentence. Or I might stop too soon and not get the complete sentence. Likewise with selecting paragraphs, I might accidentally get a little bit of the following paragraph, or I might stop too short. So how can I select things like words and paragraphs and sentences precisely? First off, if you only want to format a word, you don't need to actually highlight the word. In the old days, that was necessary, but word has gotten smarter over the years. Nowadays, you just need to place your cursor somewhere in the word, and that's good enough. Whenever you activate one of the formatted controls in the font section, these are word level controls, meaning they act at a minimum on a single word. So if you click the bold button, or the italics, or the underline, or the color, they're going to affect that entire word even though you don't have it highlighted. You just need your cursor in the word. If you were to interact with any of the paragraph controls, you don't actually need to highlight the paragraph before you make a choice. These controls are paragraph level controls, meaning they work at minimum at a paragraph level. So if I just place my cursor in the paragraph, I can center the paragraph, I can increase the line spacing of the paragraph, I can put a border around the paragraph. Just having the cursor in the paragraph is enough to have selected it. Since you only need a piece of the paragraph selected in order to utilize a paragraph level control, let's say that you wanted to change the font of the first and second paragraph. You don't have to highlight all of both paragraphs. You could literally just highlight a piece of the first paragraph and a piece of the second paragraph, and that's enough to have selected both paragraphs for paragraph level formatting, such as is if I wanted to center both paragraphs, or change the paragraph's line spacing, or go up and highlight those paragraphs. Now, if you need to do something like change the font of the paragraph or the font size, you will have to select the entire paragraph. But instead of clicking and dragging diagonally across the paragraph and running those earlier risks, you can just triple click in the paragraph. So a single click will select the word, but a triple click will select the entire paragraph. Now, if you're wondering what a double click will do, a double click will also select the word, but that's more of an older feature, which has been superseded by just being able to click in the word. If you want to select the sentence, instead of having to click and drag and try to find the end of the sentence exactly, again, running the risk that you might accidentally select a little too much or a little too little or stop a little short, you can hold down your control key and click anywhere in the sentence and it will select the sentence perfectly. So if I were to hold down control and click here, I'll select that sentence. If I hold down control and click here, I'll select this sentence. So in essence, a single click selects a word a double click also selects a word, but is unnecessary. A control click selects the sentence, and a triple click selects the paragraph. If you need to select from some random start point to another random start point, and you don't want to have to click and drag because you run into the risks of selecting too much or too little, it might be safer to just click at the start point to drop your cursor, then hold down shift and click once at the end point. A click shift click essentially says let's highlight from a start point to an end point. And now for the strangest selection trick of the day. Normally if you click and hold in a paragraph and pull straight down, you'll select consecutive information. But look what happens when you hold down your alt key and drag down, and I'm going to pull diagonally at the same time. You could actually select a specific box of data. Now if you're thinking why would you ever want to do this, it's a valid question. Because look what happens if I were to go in and change my font or make it bold or italics or underline. It looks like I've made a mess of my document. But that's not where that trick is useful. It's useful when you have information like this that maybe you've copied and pasted from a website or another document. This bulleted list is not being generated by Word. Instead, this is actually typed in information. So these bullets are no different than the text that follows. There's just spaces between the bullets and the text. Now, if I want to remove these bullets but keep the text, I would have to manually delete out the bullets, moving from row to row, deleting out the unwanted information. And this could take a great deal of time, especially if the list is long. Here's where the Alt selection trick comes into play. I'll place my cursor at the first bullet, hold down Alt, 
and now I can click and drag straight down, highlighting the area that I don't want, press delete, and I've gotten rid of all the bullets. Now let's look at a way to speed up your formatting steps. If you select a word and change its font, now let's say you want to change another word to that same font. If you select the word, and in this case we can just place our cursor, we're not going to go up to the font dropdown and try to search through the font list and change it to the same font. Instead, we're going to press the F4 key. The F4 key repeats the last performed action. So now I could click from word to word, pressing F4, and apply that font to those specific words. Now, if you want to apply multiple font changes and be able to use that F4 trick, since the F4 only repeats the last performed action, I would need to go into the deep dive controls for the fonts. When you're in a dialog box, you can make as many choices as you want. Because now when you press OK, all of those actions are treated as a single action. So clicking on a word and pressing F4 will invoke all of those formatting choices. So now I can go from word to word to word, applying multiple font changes. This also works when working with paragraphs. I've clicked in this paragraph, so any options I click in the paragraph group will affect the paragraph entirely, such as centering or line spacing. If I apply a paragraph level change, then go to another paragraph and press F4, I'll apply that paragraph level change again. To apply multiple paragraph level changes, I'll select a paragraph, go into the deep dive controls for paragraphs, make my choices here, I'll put six points before, six points after, I'll do double spacing, I'll indent one inch on the left, one inch on the right, press OK, and I've changed my paragraph. If I go to another paragraph and press F4, I've changed that paragraph as well. I can now repeatedly press F4 from paragraph to paragraph, applying all of those changes. Of course, since those paragraphs are consecutive, I could have highlighted all of the paragraphs and applied those changes, but this is especially useful when you want to apply changes to one paragraph in one part of the document and then apply those same changes to a paragraph in another part of the document. Thanks for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.